Can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So thank you so much. I'm David Moretti. I'm the creative director of Wide Magazine in Italy. First of all, thank you guys for the invitation. It's a great honor to start this beautiful conference. So let's go straight to the point. Uh, Wired, uh, maybe most of you know but what why is the Bible of uh, the digital culture. Well, and then Italy. Um, but it sounds weird, no? And I say this because it was exactly the same thing that I thought when Condonas contacted me the first time. It was 1999, 2000. And actually, I knew that one of my favorite independent magazine ever, why it was bought by a fashion publishing company. Well, beside that, I didn't think that my country was ready for such a revolutionary uh, title. But seven years after, everything changed. Uh, first of all, Wired, thanks God, survived to Condé Nast. And the digital thing become, uh, became of global interest. And third, my country. Well, my country didn't change for a second in much more than seven years, 10 years. All the cliches and stereotypes you can imagine, they were absolutely true. Corrupted politician, nasty girls, football player. Well, even better, nasty girls becoming politician. It was absolutely a mess, absolutely a mess. So, but we knew that there was a country ready to be told, completely different, invisible. So we decided to take Wired and put a spot on the invisibles, uh, the innovators, innovation. So, the, but the most challenging thing was this quote from the very first creative director of the magazine, John Plankett. So Wired for him was extraordinary information presented in extraordinary ways. So. It was pretty challenging to me as a designer, honestly, but especially for all the people involved into the project of launching an Italian edition. So um, we decided to use, not to uh, simplify our language and the language of the brand, but we use the visual communication as uh, an instrument of comprehension to help the people to hook their attention, rivet their attention, seduce them with uh, a different language and help them in forming an opinion and then provoke them and to dialogue all together in our community. So I decided to start from the very, very first page of the magazine that is the cover. And I would have liked to have some special experience, physical experience, and not using only visual metaphors, uh, but to present it and introduce our contents to our readers in a different way. This is a, a cover, it's pretty strange like this, but uh, it was a, a special issue with a special editor. She's uh, Miss Shirin Abadi, Nobel Peace Prize for Women Rights and Iranian. So we decided to uh, create an entire issue between Milan and Tehran. And it was 2009, you remember the riots, students against the regime. It was a pretty dramatic situation. So I wanted something particular. I would have liked to protect, to create a veil, a cover that could uh, protect this very brave but fragile, honestly, uh, a, a woman. And at the same time, to provoke our, my readers to, to act. And so you had to physically break the magazine to have access to the contents inside, not only this beautiful portrait by Dan Winters, but also uh, the manifesto inside translated in three languages and of course to the fissure inside. Here is the opener. And again, Milan and Tehran, an hybrid, pretty interesting. So I worked it with uh, a friend, Fred Fuzuni, a fantastic calligrapher, and Dan Winters. Uh, well, another example of a strange kind of cover, I would decided to use paper and brass and die cuts, a lot of sophistication in print to provoke, provoke emotionally our audience. So um, we wrote our intention to uh, publish something about this online phenomenon called pop economy. And um, in our forum, uh, a reader wrote that for him, there were a lot of relationship between the pop economy and what happened in America in the 40s and the 50s. 
And after collecting all the information about this feature, I thought that was a brilliant idea. So I involved into um, the, this very serious uh, economist, Loretta Napoleone, and she was enthusiastic to play with us. And so well, we created really a book into the cover of the magazine. And so you could open the book again and then having access to the table of contents here and then the feature inside. Here is the sequence of the spreads. And again, uh, a part of the, of, of the article is uh, in form of uh, advertising pages. But basically, the article was an essay. So I, I, I presented a book and then an essay. So I wanted something more. So I add a booklet, different paper, different cut, and 24 pages full of information, more or less uh, 100 websites with a lot of details and imperfectly, uh, imperfect 50 style here again. So a magazine in a magazine. So uh, three years ago, we started, we had a, a, a section in the magazine called how to. Uh, the how to section was full of uh, trick and tips for what we call the analog dinosaurs, because Wired is uh, a good magazine for digital natives, but we didn't want to share and, and split our, our audience. We would have liked to attract more, more people, of course, so we decided to create this uh, magazine that we put in the magazine. It was 32 pages, and I decided to uh, express these tips and, 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 and tricks in the form of comics. So I worked for three years with Timber Smith. This is a typical feature. And uh, again, there is no hierarchies between uh, photography, typography, illustration. Uh, the claim, the first claim of the magazine was uh, stories, ideas, and people that are changing our world. And so we, I'd love to introduce ideas and revolutionary ideas through this, the live and of the, 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 the people that in, involved into our stories. In this case, uh, a, a very strong man I was a former president of the European Space Agency. So he decided, he asked Wired to uh, use the Wired to write an open letter to President Obama because he, he didn't agree with him because um, Obama said he, he would have liked to uh, reopen the, the, the space program to uh, mission to, to the moon. He didn't agree with him, and, and so he, he used um, our magazine. But during the photo shooting, we spent a lot of time speaking about the program, space program, Walt Disney, and, and Fawn Brown, and blah, blah, blah. But at the, at the same time, we, we spent one hour quarreling and fighting because I discovered that he was a, a super fan of Thor, the, the superhero of Marvel Comics. And honestly, I, I prefer Silver Surfer. So I, we start fighting for one hour, and he started acting properly as an Italian, moving and moving. So after that, we decided to uh, use that emotional way to express that he has in, uh, in, in the layout. And so we add together uh, planets and rockets and starship. After uh, there was an idea to use this kind of animation also for our in our website, but it was not possible at that time. And, but after a few months, um, he started um, uh, a TV program with Discovery Channel, and he asked us to animate uh, the, the program. Um, here is another superstar of the magazine. He is famous because he's the creator of a famous video game. World of Warcraft and Diablo is Andrea Pessino, Italian again. And when we asked him uh, references, uh, why he decided to start um, to, to design video games, he, he, he spoke out, uh, about the importance of a movie and a book that was Gulliver's Travels. And so it was obvious to, to present him as a, as a modern Gulliver, like tied uh, to the ground with ropes and in you know, the second opener him bringing uh, the ships out from the docks. That is a, a very famous frame from the black and white movie. But 
sometimes we love to play it loud and other times our vo voice needs to be smoother. So the, again, the hierarchy, the balance between typography, illustration and photography can change. Like in this case or in this, this feature uh, dedicated to Boris. Uh, no, it's not true, but it's pretty impressive. Eh? And or here, uh, still life of some gears and tools that uh, replace human organs and or in this particular case where the typography seems to disappear um, around uh, uh, the picture. Um, well, this picture was about uh, an Italian hacker um, from Anonymous and what a surprise he was available for a photo shooting. So, well, pretty strange. In fact, the second day said to me, no, I'm not available anymore. But the third day said, let's find a way. And the, the fourth, no, and yes and no. So we spent one week, uh, but I desperately wanted a portrait, a picture. And, but I couldn't figure out in which way I could maybe uh, uh, work it out. And again, till I found the personal work of a fine artist, David Riley, and it was perfect because I had a portrait but not recognizable, no, as this is a human person, but not recognizable specifically as a person with a name, but it was a, a portrait with a glass. Um, you can read White Italia in layers. The first layer is composed of what is writable, of course, um, and then the second is composed of what is legible, that is completely another thing. And the third layer is is the geeky part of me, um, the, my favorite one, to hide uh, meanings. It's, I hate decoration, honestly, even if Wired is traditionally so, so designed, heavily designed, but I hate to decorate. And I love to put every, every single element that I put need to, to be meaningful, especially related to the content. Uh, it, it, meant, it, it means to, to serve. And again, here is an opener for a feature about Enigma's mystery. And uh, I, I didn't want to use a picture of an illustration. It's simply a code. And the headline is hidden behind this code. And you could maybe solve this reader, a riddle and go online and, and, and maybe have access to extra contents. Or maybe just... Uh, going, um, but my my editor in chief uh, after that asked me not to waste creativity and 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 says uh, why don't you imagine maybe a section basically uh, um, dedicated to this kind of thing? So I involved uh, a close friend of mine, an architect, Italo Rota, and so we uh, created a series of fifteen uh, real riddles and. Um, and so we use photography, and we call this section "Relax." Um, digital to me is it's not an aesthetic; it's an opportunity. And so, um, it is possible to me also to involve in the magazine other languages, so traditional languages, and maybe all techniques like calligraphy. So heavily, we we use a lot of calligraphy in the last five years at uh, in at White Italy, and again here in example, uh, a beautiful um, opener designed by Luca Barcellona, and again, uh, Carlo, uh, Carlo, uh, my editor in chief at the time, asked me to use calligraphy for its own page, the editor's page that is the first page after the cover, and so it was possible to me to involve. A, a long list of great calligraphers for a long, long time. Um, but again, calligraphy and digital. Here is an ad, uh, another example of you could create hybrids. And this is a poster uh, dedicated to our presence to the BNL in Venice, not fine art, but architecture. And here again, of, of course, digital fonts. And so we work so, so, so much with with font uh, foundries, in this case with font fabric, and here creating real things. Um, we can open a museum with all the things that we, we did. And here, a student, what a surprise. This is a great lesson that comes from the digital. The, 
the digital, the digital and the new technology, they are blurring the line between professional, amateur, students, or blogger and journalist. So I, I literally fell in love with the art of the students, uh, Björk Lisbakken from Oslo, and she created this alphabet using simply metallic films and pins. It was a long essay, pretty boring, five spread about multi-universe and this solution came unexpected. And also sometimes, uh, now we, we don't start from the magazine, um, we decided to speak about the dark web and our first idea is to create um, something different online um, a format that we call Multimag, or it's a long format uh, on, 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 on the web, so you could use parallax effects, you can add a lot of text and, and quotes. And for that, I didn't want to, to, to change uh, the layout on, on the print, so simply I changed orientation. Nothing, nothing uh, new, absolutely, but it was absolutely helpful here. And with an uh, illustration by Kevin Ang, uh, we illustrate this incredible uh, form, black form. And here is the second spread. Sometimes, considering the lift through of the magazine, it's good for the reader to stop for a while, to, to have the possibility to stop and clear the mind and be ready for a second story. And using second spread, uh, it, it's a good, good, good way. Well, infographic, information design, data, visualization. So we are pretty popular in Italy because we massively use this kind of language. We started with a section that uh, traditionally is in, in the front of the book of the magazine called Infoporn. Well, um, Infoporn are simply inf infographics. So we have here in this particular case is the evolution of the robots. So from Mazinga to Pacific Rim. You have your legend with color index. You can spend five, ten minutes and join yourself discovering a lot of details and blah, blah, blah. Other times, maybe you can spend much more than five or ten minutes. Um, Carlo again asked me a spread that could express the importance of Italy before Wired. But at the same time, because this spread was on the, the, the issue of the 20th anniversary of the brand, also to explain what Wired is. So on the right side we have this big star that is wide US, all the rays, every single ray uh, is um, represented um, a single issue and then the black spot are our selection of the best uh, covers and again we have uh, separated orbits, uh, the first one is the website, the second one is the um, festival, the events and then we have the digital replica and other parts that are the international editions. But the fun is on the left, and here we have a galaxy with a lot of solar systems, and so in the central part we have Italy, and connected with a lot of connection with other realities like the pre and post cyberpunk scene, underground scene, and the culture and activism in Europe, and innovation, and blah, blah, blah. So, it was funny because the editor responsible for uh, checking all the details uh, left me a note on my desk saying, thank you so much because, uh, Cecily, I hate you because I spent 3,000, oh no, 32,573 minutes. Maybe it's too much, but he said to me, uh, Cecily, I hate you, but I, now I know a lot of things more, thanking also Google, about our story. So sometimes, you need to sweat to know. Because in magazine now, everything needs to be simple. Simple, simple, or easy, easy, easy. That sounds like lazy at the end. And you have to spend time to know. If you want to dialogue some, with someone, you need to speak properly. And so sometimes, also in magazine, you get something pretty hard to understand. Here is a, a zoom in. OK. OK, we also mm, present information design in the form of features. And in this case, I, I'd love to, to include in the magazine great stars of information design. In this case, I worked with um, Nicholas Felton 
And so we worked together um, trying to organize all the data uh, about Wikipedia. And at the end, it was a beautiful feature of uh, four spread and this opener here is, if you know Nicholas Felton, you can easily recognize his, his aesthetic, his style. Well, but I wanted again to create something like the, 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 the cover that I, that I showed you before. And well, uh, information design, it's, uh, it's a good opportunity to add extra content. So I'd love also to, to include information design into the features. The only way was to create a uh, use a gatefold. So literally you could open your feature and, um, dis uh, and discover maybe new elements. The first example of gatefold was this infographic. Was it simply an infographic? Everything is it's, it's simple. Color, we have mission to the moon, mission to Mars, and the blue is the moon, red Mars, clear. Everything is specular. We didn't need a legend for that. But then we decided to add some more complexity. And we created this. Um, we worked on a, on a report from the Agency for the Future from Palo Alto. And they asked 7,000 7, uh, visionaries to tell their idea of the future. And they collect uh, in 200 pages um, of reports, a lot, a lot of visions. And so we wanted to present and to create something. Um, and immediately we, we imagine an installation. We'd love to, to create something like uh, a, a cinematic experience, but in uh, what, an installation could, that could be circular. So you could be under and, and look like uh, staring at, at the stars in summer and discovering all the ideas in, in, in this, in this uh, hypothetical sky. But we organize all these ideas. So in categories like political infrastructure, environment, econ uh, economy and society, and then other sub uh, categories. And at the end, all these visions are related one to another and at the end, they are related to a visual metaphor. And then we started again to create something different. So we were free to imagine something that could stay and live outside the magazine, but also could have a representation, physical representation in the magazine. So we decided to create something different, a video game. So we selected and we created a database of 300 companies working online and with a lot of data, values, parameters, and we decided to visualize every company as a robot. Here we have 300 robots, and everyone, every, it's, it's different from another. And, and again, in the video game, literally, you could pick up your robot, see all the data. So you also could match one robot with another robot. And again, with a random process, you could discover something. So, in the magazine, everything is linear, A to B. But in the video game, with a random solution, you could discover something that came again unexpected. So we start to imagine ourselves. We started with a magazine, focus on our attention in the experience of the paper. And then we found ourselves thinking of the experience in other channels, in other situations. So we start to think ourselves like multi-channel editors. Multi-channel experience was, was the key word one year ago, two years ago, actually. Because we had the opportunity, two years ago, we had the new toy, the iPod. And so we, we had the possibility to create our own replica. And we started again from, from, from the cover. And in a very simple way, we just move elements so we, we decided to add something. There is audio, if you could. Perfect. This is a sequence, OK? And 30 second sequence. But then we discovered that sincerely 30 seconds. Wow, there, are too, there were too much, honestly. And we decided to come back to the 10 second experience. 
So pretty simple. But the replica is so good because, um, for example, talking about infographic, you can maybe show things in a different way. In this case, just moving and touching your, your ship down, you can move and discover a lot of information about Pirate Bay, for example. And you can go forward and backward. Okay. And we change completely. Uh, we started as editorial designers and then we needed to learn how to animate we things and also we needed to know how to edit an audio, how to write in code, how to shoot a video. And it was great because in my graphic department they, they were absolutely uh, happy to learn and have new opportunity to express our contents. In this way, this is a feature about a selection of 100 application, the best application of the last year. Here is beautiful, simply an in, in illustration, but in the magazine, everything changed if you could imagine how to move things. Here is the gig guy here, healthy. Lob trotters, stay at home guy. So now we are thinking before to the replica, how to create animation or involve our reader in a different experience. And then the last ring of the chain is, is the, the, the magazine. This is a good example. It was a feature about what's called Apocalypse Not. So uh, now we know that the, fortunately the, the Mayas, they were wrong. So uh, that their prophecy never happened, and so we decided to present a feature about the real threats, not the Mayas, but in a very ironic way, ironical way. It was perfect, this carnival style, it was perfect, and, but the real experience was in, in the tablet. Not a loop, but a different story. Audio is so, so important. This is the first chapter, okay? The first menace uh, and, and threat is pollution, of course. We decided to work mixing Dr. Strange Love and Snow White together. Second pandemic, so the happy family is not happy and no more here. Then overpopulation, village of the damned. And, and then resources. So at the office we are in four. I have two designers for the application, two designers for the magazine, but it's no sense at all. We need to, to work together. We need to save time. We need to save efforts, creativity. We need to know exactly how to manage this incredible language that is the emotional link that and the emotional power that we can produce between us and our and our readers in the future of wide Italia, and we started with a magazine now we are thinking of, of new experience and, and online application events video games even retailing temporary shop and so on so the 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 future is to move the only chance to survive is to react properly. And sincerely, the very first rule, the most important rule in our work is to respect the first quote. So to find out beautiful and incredible stories and find out the good way to express them in a very extraordinary way. So thank you so much.